Hey, what's up, guys? I want to make a quick follow-up vid on my latest controversial vid, which was titled The Reason Why Elden Ring Has Me Worried. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I got my point across properly. Uh, reason why, it was just clips taken from a stream, so it does not really convey the full idea. So let me tackle the subject head-on here. Now first, let me get one thing out of the way. I think Elden Ring is going to be amazing. I can't wait for it, I can't wait to play it, and I'm probably going to have a ton of fun with it, and I'm sure you guys will too. I'm not going to make a comparison here with like Elden Ring and Cyberpunk, like uh, how Cyberpunk, you know, was really hyped and it did not live up to the hype because it was a buggy mess. As a fan of From Software, I have played their games since the very old Armored Core days on PlayStation 1, and one thing they carried over throughout all the From Software history is how consistent they were with game releases. They always release good games that are not buggy, up to standard, and pretty much what you would expect. So we're not going to touch on that aspect here. Now second thing I want to address here. This is mostly a PvP channel. Uh, our audience here mostly cares about PvP just like I do. We all understand that the Souls franchise is mostly catered toward PvE players, but it should also be mentioned that there is a significant care that is put toward these games as far as PvP is concerned. It is not an afterthought. In Dark Souls 3 all of the patches were pretty much only PvP related. From Software has put a lot of work to try and balance Dark Souls 3. Also, in some of the more recent interviews, Miyazaki explicitly stated that as of right now, right about now, they are working on the PvP aspect of Elden Ring. So, with all that being said, let's jump to it. The reason why Elden Ring has me worried is because it does seem to carry over a lot of elements from Dark Souls 3. And while this might not seem like a bad thing, since Dark Souls 3 was a very good game and it definitely had a lot of success. I really enjoyed it and long and behold we're still playing it today, we're still enjoying the PvP today. So it definitely got some things right. But one thing Dark Souls 3 did not get right is weapon balance. And this is what I'm worried for Elden Ring. I was streaming and I asked my viewers the other day if they thought that Dark Souls 3 was balanced. And there was an overwhelming answer, everyone said no. And while my viewers are not the typical type of viewer, they're more of the knowledgeable type of viewer. They all have a lot of experience with the game. So I value my viewers' opinion a lot. And the reason why they claim that Dark Souls 3 was not balanced is pretty clear. There are really two major problems with the Dark Souls 3 PvP combat system. Now Dark Souls 3 got a lot of things right. The combat is really great. It feels amazing to swing your weapons. It's very rewarding. It does reward good play, spacing, timing. Uh, all, all kinds of things that you would find in a lot of competitive games, quite frankly. What Dark Souls 3 did not get right are the way it handles connections and the way it handles weapon balancing. This is what has me worried. It seems like Elden Ring might not change those things. And while it is pretty early to tell, we don't really know these things, this is still in the realm of speculation. I would like to remind you that this is the way Elden Ring could go wrong, not this necessarily the way Elden Ring will go wrong. And we'll also touch on how it could go right, because there's also a lot of ways this could go right. The way Elden Ring could go wrong, as far as PvP is concerned, is if they don't touch on any of the connection issues that were previously in all other Souls games. Now if you've played PvP for a long time, you might have encountered some players that were extremely hard to, to catch, extremely hard to roll catch, to, to hit period. And there's a logic behind that, thanks to my good friend Amir, who has a great video explaining why latency makes you invincible in PvP. We know that you can effectively reach true invincibility by spamming roll in Dark Souls 3, if your latency is high enough. Now this is a big issue and definitely something that should be fixed. If this does not change, there is a good reason to be worried about the PvP experience in Elden Ring. Now let's look at the reason why this happens. As much as most of the time the players are at fault, their connections are not necessarily good, when they're lagging, when they're using Wi-Fi, it's really all on the player. The game devs can't really do anything about that. But when the issue is mostly about distance, when there's a large distance between two players, 
there is definitely something the devs can do about this. The easiest way to go about this is region locking and ping filter, but this is a double-edged sword. Now what this would do is it would only allow you to connect to players that are closer to you, most likely of the same continent. You're effectively shrinking the amount of players that can connect to each other. And in a game like this, where the player base is already segmented in different level brackets, so the lower levels play with the lower levels, mid levels together and so on and so forth there's definitely a lot of different level brackets and there's not that many players that can connect to each other at the end of the day so if you shrink that further you end up with a very small pool of people that can connect to each other despite having a very large player base now another way they could fix this is by reducing the amount of invincibility frames but again this is another double-edged sword by doing so, you're also modifying the PvE experience. And while this might be a good thing for balance or a good thing for challenge to not make the game too easy, this might not be the direction they want to go. So all in all, there's actually no being cut good fix for this. There's, there's always pros and cons to picking up the connection problems. And just a little quick side note here to debunk the common myth that a dedicated server would help the cause. Uh, would actually do the opposite. The problem here is with latency. If you add a dedicated server, uh, you improve the re reliability of connections, but you also increase the latency. So you're really making the problem worse when it comes to adding a server. Uh, you really want your game to be peer-to-peer, -peer, especially the way players connect to each other in a world. Uh, they would have to go through a loading an extra loading screen every time two players connect to then go onto a server. It just simply cannot work that way. So let's not think that a dedicated server would help Elden Ring as far as PvP is concerned. So now the second reason that Elden Ring has me worried, in the Souls game's history, curved swords have always dominated. And I think this would be a good opportunity to not necessarily change that, but to at least give a better fighting chance to other weapons. In some of the more recent interviews, Miyazaki indicates that there's definitely a lot of similarities between Dark Souls 3 systems and Elden Ring. And this is a good thing, because I think Dark Souls 3 was a great game, and there's definitely a lot of good aspects that are, can be drawn from Dark Souls 3 here. Although if we look at the Elden Ring trailer, we see a lot of animations from Dark Souls 3 weapon carry over to Elden Ring. Now the animations themselves are not just animation. The thing about animations in a game like this is that animations mean the moveset of a weapon and the moveset of a weapon determines if a weapon usually is good or not. I also want to make something clear. It is perfectly normal and expected for studios to reuse animations, reuse assets in general and this is really the only way they can go about improving and going up in scale and being more ambitious with a project. The reason they can go big, go open world in Elden Ring, add a bunch of different systems it's not only because they have acquired knowledge over time, it's also because they have acquired or created a lots of assets that they can use and utilize in, in their game. And the particular assets we care about here are animations, more specifically weapon animations. Because again, weapon animation determines weapon moveset. And weapon moveset is a very, very important factor that determines whether a weapon is good or not. Since a lot of movesets are going to be carried over from Dark Souls 3 to Elden Ring, it is fair to look at what Dark Souls 3 did right and what Dark Souls 3 did wrong as far as weapon moveset are concerned. Now I don't want to spend too much time explaining why Dark Souls 3 is not balanced, but let me give you a quick rundown. There's clearly some weapons that are better than others. In Dark Souls 3, curved swords and daggers, more specifically the fast curved swords and murky hand sight, are by far superior to any other weapon in the game. And the problem does not just stop here. There's also weapons that are extremely bad and that are never used in PvP unless someone is just trying to meme. I believe that every weapon should have a reason to exist and to be used. For instance, the Tailbone Spear in Dark Souls 3. Not really a good weapon, but it has a redeeming quality. Because of its weapon art, the Wind weapon art, the weapon is ev effectively very useful in invasions, you can knock people over with it, you can push people with it. It did win me a lot of invasions. The weapon might not be the best, and we don't necessarily want the weapon to be the best, but at least it has some flavor to it, 
at least it has a, a purpose, a use for it. Now let's look at other weapons. The Brigand Axe. Now why does no one play with the Brigand Axe? Well, the Brigand Axe is basically the same weapon as the Battle Axe. Same weapon as the Dragon Slayer Axe. Same weapon as the Man Serpent Hatchet. And at this point you're wondering, well, are all these weapons really the same? Well, they kind of are. They differ slightly from range, you know, damage, damage type. But again, their moveset is the same. They don't really offer something different. If you're picking one weapon over the next, you're either choosing one because of the damage, the range, or because you like the skin. But ultimately, they really perform extremely similarly in PvP scenario. Now, it would be great if all weapons could have something unique to them and it would not be a copy-paste of another weapon. Now, I don't think we should expect weapons to have a full-fledged different moveset like in Bloodborne, but it would be nice if all weapons had something different to offer. Now, another case in point. A lot of the slow weapons in Dark Souls 3 are almost non-usable in PvP. The issue is, if someone does not want to engage, they can just dodge their attacks forever and it pretty much renders a lot of the slower weapons useless. Which is why I think slower weapons should be addressed specifically. Now I don't want to make this a grocery list. Now the bottom line is, if Elden Ring is going to carry a lot of the movesets and combat animations, there needs to be changes. The changes don't necessarily have to be in the animation itself, it can be the frame data, they can also speed up or slow down animations, modify the recovery of a weapon, there's definitely different ways they can balance weapons out. But, as far as we know so far, it seems that a lot of weapons are just gonna straight up carry over to Elden Ring without much of a change. And it is worrisome that we might get a similar situation as in Dark Souls 3 where some weapons again are lacking, some weapons are too strong and other weapons are just a copy of one another. But lucky us, there's nothing confirmed, this is still speculation and let me tell you how this could go right. If in Elden Ring they take care of these things I mentioned, which is still a very good possibility, we could end up with a game where all weapons have something to offer with the addition of the weapon arts that you assign to weapon, there's definitely a lot more room to make weapons viable. There's definitely a lot more possibilities for a weapon to perform well or to have a reason to be used. The only thing is we don't want weapons to start becoming skins, right? If two straight swords have the same moveset and only differ by their weapon art, I think changing the weapon art between the two of them will only leave us with a weapon skin that you can assign to a moveset rather than a moveset that you assign to a weapon, right? But ultimately, there is a high potential with the assign a weapon art to a weapon. I think there's going to be a lot of replayability with this. This is going to probably spark a lot of creativity, like, you know, new combos, stuff like that. It's probably going to be a lot of fun to play around with. As long as it's not too close to just reskinning reskinning a weapon from one to the next. Alright, that's going to be it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and this is just for fun. I hope I made my points clearer. And if you're interested in some daily PvP content from one of the best players in the game, well, you know what to do. Feel free to sub to the channel. Alright, take care, guys.